In this episode, I'm going to talk about public good provision uh, problem with uh, incomplete information. So what is the public good? So you probably you know it from the uh, intermediate micro courses. Public good is basically a good that uh, it, it's, it's different than private goods because the private good are goods where when you know once consumed it only gives utility to uh, the, to the person that consumes this good. The public good, however, can be consumed by all uh, agents uh, simultaneously. Uh, for example. Um, uh, a hospital, building a hospital is, or, or the hospital itself is a public good, all right? So whether you pub, uh, sort of build it or not doesn't matter. You know, all the people living in the community can use it or swimming pool, community swimming pool is a public good. Uh, highways are public good. Um, you see what I mean? So uh, um, a problem set uh, in, in a group study or in a teamwork is a public good. So. Uh, if, if you are a group of two people, let's say, and, and if, if, if you submit the problem set, uh, it, it, it is independent of who did this problem set or who solved the problems. Well, everybody in the group are going to get the same grade anyway, right? So everybody benefits out of this uh, public good. But only the person who solves the question in this problem set will suffer the cost. You see what I mean? So, you know, once you build the uh, hospital, for example, the people who contributed this public good will pay the cost, but uh, everybody else can enjoy uh, the, 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 the existence of this public good. All right, so here it's a very simplified version of it because we assume there are two players and two player uh, is about to vote, decide, to contribute to this public good or not, all right? So if you contribute, player one has a cost C1, player two has a cost C2, all right? So uh, the cost of this public good may be different to different uh, players. In order to sort of, uh, 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 in order to achieve this public good, in order to make it uh, uh, real, uh, it, it is enough that only one person contributes, all right? So therefore, for example, player, if player one contributes, whether player two contributes or not, uh, the public good will be uh, uh, realized. And so both players are going to get payoff of one, all right? Um, but obviously, uh, only the contributing player is going to suffer the cost. For example, here, both players are contributing, and so they both uh, uh, pay the cost. Here only player one is contributing, player two doesn't, and so therefore only player one contributes. Uh, I'm sorry, suffers the cost. Well, here the opposite of this one, only player two contributes. Well, if they both do not contribute, well then the public good will not be realized, and so they both will receive zero payoff. All right, so what is the value of C1? Well, we assume that this is private information, meaning each player knows his own cost. Player one knows C1, player two knows C2, but unsure about the opponent's cost. So we assume that it is common knowledge that costs are independently drawn from a distribution function, a cumulative distribution function F, over some interval C lower bar, C upper bar, where C lower bar can be as low as zero, and C upper bar can be as low as one, all right? So what does that mean? That means for some types of player one and two, they actually really enjoy uh, uh, sort of having this uh, public good. If C1 is less than one, for example, they're gonna get a positive payoff. Um, however, for some types, right? So if it is, for example, very close to C upper bar, they may actually receive negative uh, uh, payoff, and so they do not want to contribute at all. Well, obviously, regardless of the value of C1, if, if C1 is not huge number, as you can see, 1 minus C1 is worse than 1. 1 minus C1, uh, well, I mean, depending on, uh, you know, the value of 0. So each player 1 actually prefers to contribute, right? So I, I prefer, so 1 minus C1 is great, uh, less than 1, I'm sorry, but 1 minus C1, if C1 is not huge, is greater than 0. So that means players actually prefer to contribute if there's nobody else is pre uh, uh, 
uh, contributing. But obviously, if somebody is uh, contributing, for example, if player two is contributing, players have incentives not to contribute. All right. So it's it's more like you know uh, what you experience in problem set. If you know that your uh, group members are going to solve all the questions. Uh, you probably prefer, and if you trust them that they are going to, uh, you know, do a great job in solving these questions, you probably prefer to relax and not to worry about the problem set. All right, you basically shirk. Uh, however, if you're sure that nobody is going to do this problem set, you actually want to, uh, you know, put effort. Uh, but obviously, that also depends on the value of uh, your private cost. Uh, well, obviously, uh, so this is, this is the game metrics given the C1 and C2 values. So you as player one know the, uh, your, your cost C1, but you are unsure whether C2 is very small and close to zero or very large, uh, close to one or maybe higher than one. That you don't know. So you have to choose your contribute, don't contribute uh, strategy, optimal strategy. Uh, uh, without knowing what exactly your opponent's cost is. So the question is, obviously, find the symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this game. Again, they are simultaneously and independently choose their strategies. So there are too many C's here, be careful. C1, C2, so whenever I have C with subscript I, it means the cost. Whenever I have small c, whether it's underlines uh, or, or sort of a bar uh, on top of it, doesn't matter. These are all costs. Whenever I have capital C, this is the action strategy, uh, contribute. Okay, so we want to find the symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this game with cutoff strategies. All right, so here there are you know, few terms that you may not be clear about. What do we mean by symmetric Bayesian Nash and what is cutoff strategies? Well, this game has many uh, uh, Nash equilibrium, Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Uh, we are looking for symmetric ones. I'm, I'm going to explain what it means. And we're going to be looking at Bayesian Nash equilibrium with cutoff strategies because those strategies are have simpler form. So what, is, uh, uh, what, what are all those, the cutoff strategies, symmetricity of Bayesian-Nash? Well, remember a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium profile is going to be S1 star, S2 star, but here there are infinitely many types for these players. So I'm going to assume, remember, that you know, the cost can be distributed over some continuum of domain, C lower bar, C upper bar. So there are like infinitely many types for each player. And so in this framework, it is easier instead of representing S1, S2, right? Because there are infinitely many of those. It is easier to represent strategy as a function, right? So SI star, the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium strategy is gonna be a function which is gonna map each cost to one of those available strategies. Uh, uh, mm, contribute, dot contribute, all right? So for example, and, and the cutoff strategy is, has a very simple form. We already talked about this in our earlier uh, uh, videos. So the strategy is telling me to contribute if my cost, CI, is less than or equal to some threshold level, C star. All right. I, I don't know the value of that C star. I want to find it. And I am going to not contribute if my cost is beyond this uh, value, all right? So if my cost is small, quote and quote, uh, smaller than C star, I'm going to contribute. If my cost is higher than this threshold, I'm not going to contribute. So this is the strategy I am going to follow. And in fact, both players are going to follow a cutoff strategy. Well, it's symmetric because the cutoff, the threshold is going to be same for both players. All right. So a symmetric uh, Bayesian-Nash equilibrium means a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium where the strategies S1 C, S1 star C, S2 star C uh, are the same for all cost levels. Meaning whenever player one refuses, so for all values of costs, player one refuses to contribute, same for player two. And, and vice versa, all right? So uh, their strategies will be the same, 
But remember, those strategies are functions. Uh, uh, the each player's cost values may be different, and hence they may react differently. But their strategies, overall strategies, are the same. So this is what I mean by symmetricity. Okay. Um, so now let's. Uh, let me put it this way. So finding symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium uh, with cutoff strategies, therefore, means we have to find this cutoff value C star, right? So uh, th 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 this is basically what we are supposed to find. Once I find C star, I know what the strategies are going to look like, all right? So therefore, here, this question boils down the question, what is the value of C star? It's coming up next. Okay, so... Um, remember, this was the game, and now we are going to solve the game. So well, there might be a bunch of different ways to solve this game, but probably this is the simplest. So let me explain my solution. So we're going to start uh, noting one parameter. So I'm going to call it Z sub J. What is Z sub J? Well, this is the term that I'm going to use to indicate the probability that player J is going to contribute. So given the strategy profile S1 star, S2 star, Zj is basically the probability that the Sj star Ci is going to be equal to C, you know, contribute. All right. Well, remember here we are looking for pure strategies, meaning uh, you know, each type is going to either contribute or not contribute. They're not going to randomize between these two actions. However, we know that some of those types, uh, you know, some of those which are higher than the, the, the cost, which is higher than uh, uh, some C star threshold will not contribute. And some of those are going to contribute because their cost is less than some threshold value. The question is, well, what is the cost of my opponent? Well, I don't know, but I know that it is distributed according to some probability distribution function. So therefore, uh, that's exactly it. It's like I can calculate Zj. Zj is the probability that my opponent is going to contribute. And later we will use it. But let's first try to... So that's just one thing that I want you to sort of uh, note uh, because it's, it's going to be uh, important. So now let's focus on the best response. Like when contributing is the best response over not contributing? Well, given my opponent's strategy. Well, here, again, given the strategy of uh, strategy profile S1 star, S2 star, remember these are symmetric strategies and cutoff strategies. Player I's expected, so this is player I's expected payoff of contributing is what? Well, if player, but by the way, let's look at player one, all right? Because the game is symmetric. If player one contributes, whether his opponent is contributing or not contributing is irrelevant because his payoff is going to be one minus his cost, all right? Same for player two. Therefore, I can just write CIUI here. However, what is player I's expected payoff if he doesn't contribute? Well, again, look at player one, because the game is symmetric, same is going to be true for player two. Well, if he contributes, he's going to get, uh, I'm sorry, if he doesn't contribute, well, he may get one, but he may also get zero. So when he gets one, only if he contributes. So therefore, his expected utility is going to be one with probability that his opponent contributes, plus zero with the remaining probability. So remember, ZJ is the name I gave to the probability that the opponent uh, 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 contributes. So therefore, expected utility of player I, if he doesn't dis uh, 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 if he doesn't contribute, is going to be only ZJ. All right, ZJ. Be careful. Therefore, for player I. Contributing is a best response if and only if his expected payoff of contributing is greater than or equal to his expected payoff of not contributing. So, which is, by the way, equivalent to saying that uh, this term. Hmm. So what does that mean? That means player I is going to contribute if and only if his cost does not exceed this number, 1 minus zj. But what is zj? I don't know. So let's now go back to this term and try to understand what it is. Well, first of all, zj and zi are equal. Why? Well, because remember, we are looking at symmetric 
uh, uh, cutoff strategies. So if player one is contributing, player two will also be contributing. If player one is not contributing, player two is not contributing. So they behave exactly the same for all cost levels. So therefore ZJ and ZI, I mean Z1 and Z2, must be the same. Okay, but the thing is, what was uh, what is ZI? Well, ZI is the probability that he is going to contribute. Well, when is he going to contribute? Well, probability of player I contributing is actually this, right? Remember, player I is going to contribute in equilibrium if and only if this is true. So what is the probability that the cost of player I is going to be less than or equal to 1 minus Zj? So what is this? What is this probability? Well, this probability, remember, Ci is a random variable which distributed uh, over uh, C lower bar, C upper bar uh, with a probability distribution function F. So therefore this probability is nothing but F of 1 minus Zj, uh, this term. Okay, so what does that mean? That means, as you can see, Zj must be equal to F of 1 minus Zj in symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, in symmetric uh, Bayesian-Nash equilibrium with cutoff strategies. Okay, very well. Well, the question is, uh, how can I find the value of Zj? Well, obviously I cannot solve this. Uh, I mean, I, I have to find this cutoff value, Zj, right? I mean, this probability that uh, he is going to contribute. Once I find this probability, I can recover uh, by the way, this is true in any symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium. It really doesn't have to be a cutoff strategy because we didn't really use the idea of cutoff strategy yet. So this is true in any symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium. Once I solve this equality and find the value of Zj, I can solve the cutoff value. Uh, well, how so? Well, let's make a simplification assumption. All right, so for example, let's assume that, uh, where should I write it? Uh, let's write it here. So let's assume that F is distributed uniformly over zero, one interval, okay? So what does that mean? That means F of X is equal to X, remember? It's a uniform distribution over zero, one. So here C lower bar is zero, C upper bar is one. All right, well, now I can solve this. So that means, therefore, Zj equals f of 1 minus Zj. f of 1 minus Zj is nothing but 1 minus Zj because f of x is equal to x. So therefore, Zj, which is equal to Zi, by the way, oops, is equal to 1 half. Okay, so good. What does that mean? So... Uh, let me erase these as well. So once I find this, uh, remember I need to find the cutoff strategy, the, that C star. So up until this point, I, I didn't use the idea of cutoff strategy. So here, remember, Zj can also be written as what? Probability, so let's remember that uh, uh, Sj uh, of Cj is equal to contribute. So this is the probability that player J is going to contribute. So we already found that Zj is equal to one half. I mean, I, J doesn't matter at this point, but let's keep going with the same notation. So this is contribute, so capital C, be careful about this. So what is this probability? Well, if you remember, if this is a cutoff strategy, because Sj star, I'm sorry, uh, is a cutoff strategy, right? We are looking at a cutoff strategy. We are looking for Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium in cutoff strategies. That means uh, Cj is less than or equal to, right? So when do I uh, 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 contribute? As long as my cost is less than or equal to Cj. So that is equal to, therefore, probability that Cj is less than or equal to C star. What is this probability? Well, because this is a uniform distribution, this is equal to C star, all right? So therefore, C star is equal to one half, as simple as this, all right? 
Um, so let me sort of uh, summarize it here. If the f function is distributed uniformly over zero one interval, then the symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium strategy profile strategy profile is such that SI star is equal to contribute if cost is less than or equal to C star, which is equal to one half, and don't contribute otherwise. Okay? So, if you want another example, what if F is distributed uniformly over zero two interval? All right, instead of zero one. Well, then what is different now, the f of x is not going to be x, but it's going to be x divided by two, right? Uh, this is how the PDF of a uniform distribution is. So what does that mean? That means, uh, if you remember, in symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium, we must have this equality. So however, so the rest is not going to be exactly the same. So what is f of 1 minus zj? Well, because the f is uniformly distributed over 0, 2, it is going to be 1 minus zj divided by 2. So now if you sort of solve it, what you're going to get is zj is equal to 1 over 3, not 1 over 2. Hmm. So then that means 1 over 3 is equal to zj, which is this probability. Now I'm trying to find the cutoff uh, the threshold, which is equal to this, right? The probability that my cutoff, my strategy, I'm sorry, my, my cost is going to be less than or equal to my cutoff, C star. But again, this probability normally is equal to F of C star. It was equal to C star because it was a uniform over zero, 1, but this time it's going to be C star divided by 2 because it is uniform over zero, 2. So once I have this, therefore, z star divided by 2 equals 1 third. That means c star is equal to 2 over 30. All right. So if I need to summarize, then that means if this is the case, well, then s i star is equal to contribute if ci less than or equal to 2 over 3, don't contribute otherwise. Okay?